welcome back. Can you believe we only have two weeks until Thanksgiving? Today I'm going to be in the kitchen baking up some Thanksgiving sides that I've been baking up for my family for many years. And so I'm going to be sharing those with you. And also, since I do use the same menu pretty much every year, I went ahead and made up a really cute little menu board. Um, so if you like that, Stay tuned to the end of the video where there's a short tutorial on how I made that, okay? I hope you get inspired today. Let's have some fun. Okay, are y'all ready? I know I am. So to start off here, we're gonna make the cornbread for the Southern cornbread dressing. And the what you need for that is one cup of self-rising cornmeal, one half cup of self-rising self flour, three quarter cup of buttermilk, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and two eggs. Once you get that all mixed up, you're going to put it in your pre-greased baking dish and put it into a 350 degree preheated oven for 25 minutes. For the rest of the cornbread dressing, you're going to need seven slices of oven dried white bread, one sleeve of saltine crackers, eight tablespoons of butter, two cups of chopped celery, one large chopped onion, seven cups of chicken stock, one teaspoon of salt, some freshly ground pepper, one teaspoon of sage, one tablespoon of poultry season, and five eggs beaten.
in your saucepan over medium heat. You wanna melt your butter before adding the onion and celery. And you just wanna cook that onion and celery until they're soft. While the onions and celery are sauteing, let's go back to our bowl and we're gonna add in our um, crushed up saltine crackers and our dried bread. And I'm gonna use this little tool to break that up real good. Now we're just adding in all of our cornbread and we're gonna break that up just the same. Now you just wanna add in all your seasonings and give it a quick stir. Once those onions and celery have softened up, you wanna add all that plus the butter into your dressing mix. Now you want to go ahead and add in all of your chicken stock and your beaten eggs and stir well. Make sure to reserve about a cup of this cornbread dressing mix so you can add it to your giblet gravy later. Now you're gonna pour that into your grease casserole dish and it's going to go into a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes. For your giblet gravy, you're going to need three cups of chicken stock, your reserved cornbread dressing, two tablespoons of butter, two heaping tablespoons of flour, salt and pepper, and one hard boiled egg that's chopped. Once this comes to a boil, go ahead and add your reserved cornbread dressing and your hard boiled egg that's been chopped up. Once that comes back up to a boil, it's done. 
Cranberry sauce is super easy. All you need is one cup of sugar, one cup of water, and one bag of cranberries. Just let your water and sugar come up to a boil before adding your bag of cranberries. Let that come back up to a boil, then reduce your heat to a simmer and cover your pot. You're gonna let that simmer for 10 minutes. Then you're gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool. And as it cools, it's gonna turn into a jelly. As you can see, I garnished the top of my cornbread dressing with some fresh sage leaves just to make it pretty. I'm just prepping for the mac and cheese by shredding all of my sharp cheddar and Gruyere cheeses. This really is the best homemade baked mac and cheese ever. And for that, you're going to need 16 ounces of elbow macaroni, one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, six tablespoons of butter, one third cup of all-purpose flour, three cups of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, four cups of sharp cheddar cheese, one cup of Gruyere cheese, one cup of Velveeta, and salt and pepper to taste. For the topping, you'll need one and a half cups of panko breadcrumbs, four tablespoons of butter, one half cup of Parmesan cheese grated, and one quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. While we're working on the cheese sauce, we're also going to be boiling our pasta in some salted water. And you just want to boil that pasta until it's about one minute shy of al dente.
Once your roux is nicely browned, you're gonna go ahead and add in your milk and cream slowly while you're whisking until it gets nice and thick and bubbly. And here in a minute, you're gonna see that I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil to my pasta that's been drained. Once the sauce is nice and thick and bubbly, you're gonna go ahead and add your salt and pepper and stir. And then you're gonna very slowly start adding in the Velveeta cheese first. Once the Velveeta is completely melted, you wanna turn your stove all the way down on low and very slowly add the cheddar cheese. Now you just wanna go ahead and add in your remaining sharp cheddar and all of your Gruyere cheese and stir, make sure it's all melted. Now you wanna throw in all of your macaroni and mix very well. Now just get that into your greased casserole dish and let's get busy making the topping for that. For the topping, you wanna to go ahead and mix the panko breadcrumbs, the grated Parmesan cheese, paprika, and your butter, and mix really well. And then you're gonna spread it over the macaroni and cheese evenly before putting it into a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes.
Let's get started on our sweet potato casserole. And the first thing we need to do for that is get these sweet potatoes washed up. And you're gonna pierce them several times with a sharp knife or fork and get them into a 400 degree oven for about an hour until they feel tender when you squish them. In addition to the four pounds of sweet potatoes, you're also going to use one cup of sugar, one half cup of butter at room temperature, four eggs, one tablespoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one cup of half and half, and one teaspoon of salt. For the topping, you're gonna use one cup of chopped pecans, four tablespoons of butter melted, one cup of brown sugar, one half cup of flour, and two cups of marshmallows. Once the sweet potatoes are nice and tender and cooled enough that you can handle them, you wanna scoop all the flesh out of the skins and then add the other ingredients. Once you get everything mixed up really well, you're gonna pour it into your greased casserole and then we'll get started on the topping, this yummy, yummy topping for this. <laughs> We're gonna start the topping by chopping up our pecans, and then we're going to add the brown sugar, the flour, and butter. You'll mix that up really well, and then you're going to sprinkle it evenly over the sweet potato casserole. I almost forgot the marshmallows, y'all. Oh my goodness, don't forget the marshmallows. So you're gonna put those on first and then you're going to sprinkle your topping over those. Once you get that topping on, pop it into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all, this is so good. I had intended on being able to put this in the deep freeze and saving it for Thanksgiving Day, but my family, my husband, my kids, they smelled it cooking, and they haven't had sweet potatoes since last Thanksgiving, so, <laughs> well, we're going to eat those, and then I'll make some more on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, switching gears here just a little bit. Let's get started on that menu board that I promised. I started out with a print from Hobby Lobby that was already framed, so it was super easy. I just don't use this print anymore. Um, and I just covered the frame with some frog tape and I'm painting the inside with a black chalk paint. This is the chalk paint that I used and it was awesome. It got the job done in one coat. I used my Cricut again to make the print for this menu board and I'm going to show you some of it but y'all I have a love-hate relationship with this Cricut machine. I love all the beautiful things that you can make with it but I hate all the stuff that you waste when you do it incorrectly. So my um, the needle that cuts the vinyl was not set on the correct pressure so I ended up wasting some vinyl making this.
This is the point where I stopped filming because I was pretty frustrated with it, but it did. After some frustration, I think it turned out pretty. Y'all, thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to me. Y'all have a blessed day.